I'm on to do the front and back cow cut. Yep, yep, nip, 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 Okay. Hi everyone, how are you going? I am on to do the front and the back. We'll start the front and the back cover of my uh, steampunk journal. I have already put up one, two, three, four, five signatures and I've cut them to the size that I want and just put some uh, envelopes and some different types of paper, papers in them uh, and just some different size papers and some little uh, bags, white bags, but they're all rather different. All, oh, all rather the same but different. And I just used up a paper pad that I didn't know what I was actually going to do with it. But I thought, yep, that turned out okay. I've got some petty cash record paper there some hand, some dyed paper and just other little bits and pieces of paper, all different. So I'm not doing, um, that's as far as I've done on the signatures so far, just rounded the corners and put those together. So I'll put, shall put those over there. Now this is going to be my front and back cover. And I'm going to more or less do it in the same style that I done my coffin Halloween journals. So I'm going to actually decorate the front and the back and these um, signatures, I'm going to decorate them and then I'm actually going to put another cover on them and more or less adhere the front and this back harder cover to it plus I've got a little strip somewhere for the spine which I don't know what I've actually done with at the moment okay so I was thinking I'm just going to do the back rather plain and all I want to do I'll just I hope that lighting is okay wrong way we've got a lovely rainy day here and it's a little bit overcast but what I want to do with the back I want to keep it rather um, plain but I want it textured so I've got some tissue paper here that scrunch up and all I'm going to be doing is just putting the tissue paper on here just to give this back a little bit of texture. So I'll put a fair amount on of my acrylic matte medium. Get it everywhere. I'll just cover it all up um, because I'm going to go over the top of it with um, with some more gel medium just to seal it all on there and just press it down onto there leaving some texture on it now I just 
snip this down. Here, I hope you can't hear that little kid next door screaming. I don't know what happens in there. Um, it's an Indian family, but oh, ever since they moved in, not a day has gone past where that little kid hasn't been crying. It's like, I don't know, four or five years old. Okay, so... I'm going to give this a good cover in the gel medium just so that I've got a little bit of texture on the on the back and then just let it dry and while this is drying I can start playing with the front of the journal the front cover okay so I think that's pretty cool it's all Tuck down. All right, so I'll just put this down over the side and let it dry. Now I've got all these little bits and pieces around me um, that I might like to put on on the front of the journal it's a butterfly just get rid of this paper stop crunching it up okay so I've got a couple of little soft metal butterflies and I've got a heap of um, metal bits and pieces in here that like there's this awesome clock face and some scissors and another bit of clock face but I want to keep um, these metal ones until last because when I put them on here I actually want them to stay the colour that they are so they'll more or less go on the last layer. I have been having a bit of play around and the other day I did take a couple of photos and I got to a stage where I really liked what I was doing so not sure how good you're going to see that but that's what I want the front to look like and to and then I took a photo of it and then took the top layer off and that's how I started so that's what I'm going to do today and I am actually going to try using oh, the modeling paste um, it says on here that uh, small objects may be embedded into the paste so I'm not sure whether it really acts as an adhesive or not but I'm going to have a try anyway so just going to grab a little bit of modeling paste and just start building up more or less the first layer of, um, of my front cover so I want a bit on there but I don't want a lot so up in this corner here I have got one of these little corner pieces now this has got adhesive on or sticky on the back 
but I'm still going to put a little bit more glue on it and I don't really know how the glue is going to go on the modelling paste so this is going to be a really good trial and error experimenting with these so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here and put that piece up in this corner just about there right. so we've got that there and then I have this little um, chipboard piece just need my pokey tool to poke that out of it, I think. If I can find it. Oh, a pair of scissors will do. Just got a couple of little pieces that can be popped out, I think. Yep, there. It doesn't really matter that much. But at least I know they're out anyway and this piece is going to go up the top there so I am going to put a little bit of glue on this one as well and that can be placed just about there so I'll also have um, like some of this modeling paste um, for the texture as well in the background which that's what I'm hoping for anyway so I'll just put a bit more of that on and put some in from down here grab this other little corner piece for down the bottom put a little bit of glue on it and that can go just about there okay and then I have this other corner piece which is in two little bits because I accidentally snapped it. So I will put a bit more of the modelling paste down here. And a little bit more glue on the back of this so that's going to go about there and this one this one I'm just going to try and join together just there okay that looks pretty cool so far and now I've got I'm going to use a couple of pieces of these of this lattice and all these chipboard pieces or except for these colored ones I picked up from scrapbooking and craft so I'm going to put a bit more modeling paste on here okay now I'm just thinking um, before I put that lattice on I've got this uh, 
it's a toilet roll holder that I put through an embossing folder and it's got some really cool patterns on it so while my modeling paste is still wet and this is going to be like the first textured black background textured background I'm just going to gently press this on here and see if I can actually pick up some of that texture from the embossing that's on this toilet roll holder oh yeah cool look at that that's exactly what I was after and then a bit more up here yep that looks good like it and then some more down here so I'm just gently pressing it on and then more or less pulling it straight up to get that that lovely texture in the modeling paste put some more there There we go. Okay, that's enough for the moment. And now I'm going to put some of these on. Some of the bits of lattice. So put some glue all around here. I thought about using my glue gun, but uh, I didn't really want a lot of clumpy bits of glue left on it so oh, I'm not going to put it right to the end but I'm just going to lie that piece there and another piece is going to go more or less down here put some glue on the back of it And that piece can sit just touching that other piece there. Okay, so far so good. Now, I've got these bits here. And these ones were sent to me, I think, in like some happy mail. Um, and I thought, yeah, why not just, you know, use them up. So, let's see, um, this one here, I'm going to put down there, so I'll put some glue on it, and I'm just following the photo that I took the other day, so I'm just hoping I still like the actual outcome. <laughs> If not, I can always just rip it up and then start all over again. And that's going to go about there. And then I'm going to put the heart in between those. And I just thought if I get all this done, um, all the gluing on top of the wet modelling paste, so that heart's going to go there. And I've got a little swirly here. Um, I had it this way, didn't I? Yep, let's put that there. Uh, what was I saying? I, if I get all this wet um, gluing down on top, I can just let it all dry by itself for a couple of days. But then it's all done. And then I can come back and give it a good coat of 
gesso and then start colouring. Right, so I've got that. Now I have got some cogs that I had down in this little corner. Um, these ones here. So I'll put those down now. We've got one about there. And this one, which goes about there. And then this one. which I put about there. Now I don't think that's going to, to fit on there now. Oh yep, it is. Okay, so put some glue on the back of this one. that can sit there. So this was just the first layer that I done the other day. Um, now I've got that. I had that there but let me see the, the second and I had this little one in something like that and I do like that so I will put that there so put that just in there now I'll go the only thing I haven't put on there so far from that is this piece here. Um, I was going to sit that right there, but I found where'd it go? I found some other things that I'm thinking I might like to put on last. So I'll just leave that one off for the time being, and I'm going to go back to now. This is what the top looks like. Oh, there it is. There. Um, so then I've got I've got this key that sits about there and then other cogs coming off it. So I might just build those layers up Hmm. Um, whether I just use the glue or put a bit more um, I'll put a bit more plate paste on them so will they fit in there like that? Yep. See, I've already started to change my mind from the photo now. See, that looks pretty cool. Need a couple down here. There. Oops. There, there, and there, right, uh, that looks pretty cool too, which is not what, quite what, I need a cut, oh there's another one. Maybe another one just up there. 
Yep, that looks cool. Okay, what else have I got here? Not too much. Okay, I do like that on there, so I might put that on there too. Alright, so I did change it a little bit, but I've kept all those up there. So let me see. I'm going to put a little bit more modeling paste just down there and put a bit of glue on this because I do like this little, I don't even know what they're called. I know they'd have a proper name. I know these ones, are, the round ones, are like Flourish. So more or less just there, which seems to be roughly the centre. It doesn't matter, I'm just eyeballing it anyway. Okay, and now... Um, what I might do is actually put a bit of modelling bit of this paste on the back of these. I don't know how much to use even because I've never tried this before and press them down so that it will get stuck onto the bottom layer. So let's try that. Let's see how that goes. Because if they fall off, I will just pull them all off and start again with my hot glue. So that one goes there, and that one goes into that. And this one, I don't know how it's going to go with the... It's got little holes in it, but that doesn't matter if I fill them up. just adds another texture to that. Okay, so when that dry, when it's dry, I'm hoping that they've they've attached itself to that little bit of lattice. That was my squeaky chair. Okay, so now I've got this key and I'm going to do the same, put some of this paste on. Let's see, maybe if I've got a smaller, um, smaller palette knife. Okay, let's see how this one goes. Right, so that's going to go about there. Just get some of those lobs off. <coughs> Okay, and this one. This one's going to go right there. There. That's down. And then this one. It's going to go there. And I'm going to put this other key just there.
getting modelling paste all over me, but it's easy washed off. Okay, so let's see how this one goes. Oops, pick that up. And this one is going to go roughly there. So I'll put this one up there. This one's going to go there. Now, or that one there, or up there. Hmm. Or even up there. I'm just having a I'm having a change of mind and a, having a think. Um, okay, so thinking just put it there for the time being and a bit there way too much modeling paste on that oh, let's see okay so I'm going to put this one just about there and see how that goes. Right, clean my hands and I don't know what I've done with my um, my pokey tool just so that I can clean up just a few of those little circles in in that. Right. Just put that bit on there. Okay, so, so far so good. And it's good using these chipboard pieces on here because it doesn't actually add that much more weight to it. Right, where's my pokey tool? There it is. Now, I'm just going to use this, even though I shouldn't, and just go around and tidy up just a few of these circles that I've some of the um, modeling paste has stuck in. These little ones. It's the modeling paste is coming out rather easy. Just put it in and do a couple of little circles round and round and it comes out. But I just wanted to tidy it up just a little bit so that we can still see the original hole in them. Okay, I think that might do me. A little bit on this edge here, on the key. And up here. Maybe need a bit of weight. <coughs> put a book on it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, maybe just put a, a book on it for a bit of weight just so that everything gets held down. Okay, so that's the start of my journal cover. And 
there's the back so I'm going to just move the front over and that's I'm just going to let that have a dry so I put my tissue paper on the back and I'm going to put some modeling paste on it as well just to add another layer of texture so I'm just going to roughly cut the majority of this excess tissue paper off and just tidy it up a little bit so I can have a more prominent edge and I might use I might grab a couple of stencils out actually okay so get rid of these bits And I'll grab a stencil. Let me think. Uh, just have a look at, at my stencils and see which ones I actually want to use. Circles, feathers, triangles. Mm, I do like that one. And I nearly thought of the name then. Um, hmm, not sure about those ones. Not them ones. Oh, look, there's a steampunk one. Might give that a go. Yep, okay. I think I forgot I had that. Okay, totally forgot I had that. Is that a harlequin? Please tell me. Let me know down in the comments. Is that called harlequin? That design, with the, or is it just a diamond? I need to know what harlequin stencil is. <laughs> it's bugging me. Okay, radio. I have got this one. So where do I want that? Do I want to cover all the back of it? like half there and then go up the other half or do I just want to put hmm or just a touch of it maybe just down this side I don't know right I know I do want a few of those gears on it but I also want a little bit of this on so I'm thinking this is the back so if I turn that over, that's going to be the left side and that's going to be the right side. So, um, let's put some just up in this corner. Uh, I don't want a, a thick layer of it. Um, just maybe a thin layer, just down this side here. I do want to leave it rather textured. Okay, so I've got a bit of that there and I'll come down in this corner and put some down here. looks so cool because even though I can see the diamond shape I can still see some of the texture from the tissue paper so that is so cool all right I've got that and now I want to put a few of these gears on the back as well 
So let's just go at a bit of an angle and go there. I'm really going to have to give this um, stencil a good clean when I finish. All right. Go straight down there. And that one there. Scrape the excess off and lift it up to see what it looks like. Oh, pretty cool. Yep. So that looks all right. Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to put some more on the back and just bring that into, let me see, put a bigger one there. Okay, that's what I'm going to do, put that bigger one there. I'll see what this is like when it's dried and if I don't like it I will just I'll just chuck it but so far so it's okay and I'm just hoping like I can see that um, tissue paper all right just scrape that off and straight I can see that tissue paper coming up underneath so just hoping that that will dry down. I don't think it will. Look, I've just pulled that tissue paper up there. Just up around these here. Um, see that there? Just around there. Maybe I can push it back down and then when the modelling paste dries, just give it another going over with the the gel matte medium. I don't know, I'm not sure. But wow, didn't even think that would happen. Maybe I should have let the tissue paper dry completely before I actually put the um the the gel medium on. Okay, and see it's up just there too. But I have got another couple of these. these this is just recycled cardboard that uh, was from the back of, um, you know, scrapbooks and, and papers and things like that. So I have got another one where, um, that I can use. And I actually might do that now because I've got a feeling that this... I'm going to have trouble with that tissue paper there. So I'll just put this to the side and let that one dry. And I have got another sheet the same size cut for this for the um, the cover here. And I'm just thinking that I'm going to do this one, um, that's, that'd be the front, that's the back, okay. And I'm just going to use this stencil with the modelling paste, all, all this stencil with the modelling paste. Let's scrape that off. So I'm just going to put it there and just go over the whole lot. Just give it a thin layer because I do like those cogs and gears. Okay, 
a light scrape over the top and lift it up. Okay, that looks cool. And put a few more cogs here, down this side. Just to fill in the gaps. Don't want it really gappy. And scrape. Okay, so we've got that there. And I squashed that there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. And then these ones can just go here. Let's see how that's gone. Okay, we've got little bits of smudging here and there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Just go around there, get that edge off. So now I've, I've made myself two backs, just in case I don't like the other one. Okay. Okay, got to stop fussing or I'm really going to start to mess it up like I did up there. Okay. So, let me see. I don't think I want anything else on the back at the moment. Um, so, that's my front. First stage of the front of my, the cover of my journal and that looks pretty good already. It actually looks like it's dry enough to to use it is too I'll just give it a little while longer um, so I've got that's my front and I've got this back here and I've also got this back of the cover here which I'm not sure how that's going to go but I will let them both dry and I shall come back um, what am I going to do next Oh, I'm just going to give them all a good coat of... I'm going to use white gesso. Um, normally I'd use my black gesso. But I want... I'm going to use white because I'm going to have a little bit of extra colour on the covers. Instead of just the normal dark, grungy, steampunk <coughs> one I do. Hmm, maybe that would look nice on the back. No, I, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> alright, I shall be back. Okay, I'm back on. The back covers aren't quite dry yet, because it's only been about half an hour. So I might let those dry overnight. But my front one is, and they all seem pretty solid where I put the bit of modelling paste underneath them. 
except for that one there but I think that's just a I don't know okay so I don't think they're going to move at all so what I'm going to do now is just get um, I want to rather where's my big uh, what have I done with it I'm looking for a brush one of the soft one. Um, gosh, I don't know. I know it's sitting right here in front of me. That one will do. Okay. It's not that big, but it'll do. So all I'm going to do now is I've still got a bit of gesso left. Uh, I'm just going to give these bits a light coat with the gesso and I'm not going to hit the background I mean the the um, the modeling paste stencil in the background I'm going to try and and miss some of that so that I can still have that that bottom layer of texture that's what I'm trying to say goodness sakes so I'll go over all of this with the gesso get try and get down in some of those nooks and crannies there I just I don't want to leave a lot of clumps on it if you know what I'm talking about on the with the gesso so I'm kind of getting the brush down and giving it a bit of a, a swirl poking out some of those the holes in the the cogs I'm quite pleased with how that dried the modeling paste and and stuck the the little bits of chipboard on there these um these corner pieces here are made out of like a, a really soft plastic to make it look like metal. They're pretty cool. I might need to give those a couple of coats just to um, get rid of that the colour on them. Okay, let me see, I think that might be about all. I'll just lift it up and turn it to see if I've missed just giving it a bit of a coat with the gesso. All the different angles. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of the sides up around here. So I'll do those. Okay, I think that might be about it. So I'll just give it another, just a wipe over. Making sure I've got, I haven't got big clumps everywhere. So that one there. 
Okay, I think that might be about it. Maybe around these ones here. Okay, I think that might be about right. Now, this one here, these corner pieces, I'm going to have to let dry and give those another coat. Okay, so that's it so far. And I've still managed to keep some of that texture right on the the um, right on the bottom. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yep, I'm not sure if you can see it all properly. But yeah, that's that's what it looks like so far. And I will go around. <coughs> it's got a very small lip on it, edge on it. So go and put a little bit around here, around the sides. And I will end up giving that a coat, but I think that might be just with the black gesso. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think I've managed to grab most of that. The rain's coming down heavier now. It's so nice to be, have it cool here for a while. Okay, right. I'm going to stop fussing now and just let that dry. So that's my front cover, and I don't think these ones are dry enough. I might just hit it with the heat tool and see if it just perks up a bit. So this was the second one I done with just the modelling paste. So I will give that a light coat of gesso now because it is dry enough. So this will just look like it has a bit of embossing or something on it. You can still see the shapes of the cogs in the back and that's what I'm going for. That looks so much better even with just the coat of gesso over it. So I think it's going to look okay. Pretty cool when I've put a bit of colour on it. Yep, that does. I like that. I think I'm liking this better than the one where I put the tissue paper on, only because that tissue paper started to come up. I should have let it completely dry before I put any muddling paste on it. But I was just trying to kill two birds with one stone and get it all done in a hurry, I think. Okay, that's all covered. Yeah. And you can see that look does look cool, doesn't it? That looks pretty good. Well, I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> and just go around the sides. Let's 
So that's it, I think. I don't know which way I wanted to go up. I'll work that out later. Alright, so got to let those dry. Um, now this one here is still very wet. Um, I'll give it a hit with my heat tool and see if that does make a difference. If not, I'll just have to let it. I'll just have to let it dry. Right, I gave it a, a good going over with my heat tool, and it does feel dry. So while I've still got gesso everywhere, all over my hands and that, <laughs> and my table, um, I am going to. I will give it a coat of gesso just to see what it's like because so far I am really liking this one here that I've put the um, that plain stencil on and not sure how I'm going to like this one but I'll give it a a quick gesso and just have a look see if I like it because I've got a feeling I have buggered it up already but you just don't know until it all looks the one color well got the the background color the coating of gesso on it like a bubble there. Okay, so I have got given that a good coat of gesso. Just go and wipe a little bit of it off the top so I can bring out the, the texture a little bit. But I don't know, I'm just not liking it, I don't think. Right. Hmm. It has got some fabulous texture on it, but I still don't, I don't know. I think I'm still preferring the one, this one here, with just the, the cogs on it. And this is what this one's like. It's got a bit of mixture of everything it's got like a rougher texture. Okay, all right, well I've done them both. Um, I really am leaning towards this one. On the left, to go on to the back of that one there. So, yeah, I do like that. I love all the textures on there. Um, but I think this one here on the left might actually look a little bit better for the back cover. Okay, righto, well that's all I'm going to do today on those. I'll let those have a really good dry and, um, and then I'm going to come back in a couple of days time. Jessa will load me. And I'll come back in a couple of days time and start adding a bit of colour onto them. Which will be interesting because I really haven't chosen the colours yet either. But I just know that I don't want it too dark, the covers. So it might be like, um, I don't know, reddish or the... Um, teal green or something okay all right I'll catch you later I hope you enjoyed bye bye